Right, I'm just going to switch on a couple of things here just so that people get the basic framing of the idea, right? So uh, I've basically drawn a, a sphere here, right? I'm just going to rotate it a little bit slowly so people can see the main idea behind it. This is the supposed ball that we're on, right? Um, if you like the globe sphere and the globe, you know, here's the North Pole at the top, right? Here's the center at the bottom, yeah? Yeah. Um, and this is me moving around the surface of the globe, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm all the way up now at the North Pole and I'm going to go down a little bit now to the latitude of, you know, let's say whatever, 55 degrees, which is approximately Glasgow, right? Yeah. I'm not sure what side it's supposed to be on, right? And the other side's, I don't know, Moscow or something, right? Yeah. But, you know, so that's what they tell us, right? And one of the big arguments is that, you know, the, when you measure um, the angle to Polaris, then it's always the same angle as your latitude on the ball, right? And they like to bring that as a proof yeah. um, that, you know, that, that, we, that we actually are on a globe, right? So and, and to go back to, to what we said earlier, there's, there's different ways to interpret this depending on, on what you do, right? And how you, how you see this and how we interpret what they're saying. Yeah. Um, so that it isn't a proof, right? And let me try and explain why that's the case. So here I am on the ball, right, on the left-hand side here. There's my zenith, which is straight above my head. Yeah. There's the angle to Polaris, which they say is so far away that light rays are parallel to us, right, yeah. parallel to the sphere. And there's the angle I would measure to the horizon, which is this line that goes sort of across the top, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, so, so they tell us that that's exactly the way it is, and you can see that kind of um, segment here. That's, if you like, the latitude that I would be on on the ball. That, these are the latitude circles of the sphere that they tell us. I'm, yeah. It's going up and down, right, that, that kind of dish-shaped thing, okay? Yeah. So, so the other way, you know, they say that that's, it has to be like this because of that observation we can make. But, yeah. you know, I could uh, turn the whole thing the other way around, Dell, and say, well, let's not look at that big sphere, then let's look at this little guy down here, right? He's now on a plane, right? Let me yeah. just flip that one on. The, I think it's uh, look at this one. <laughs> yep. So he's now on a plane, right? Yeah. Um, this is, uh, if you like, the, uh, a plane down here at the bottom, flat, normal plane, the way, we, the way we know it. I can switch it on so that it actually looks like a plane, right? Okay. So, and as I retreat, right, from the North Pole, so if I'm standing straight under the North Pole, then I can measure the North Pole. Sure. And as I retreat outwards from the North Pole, right, just moving backwards, yeah. then things visibly drop in position, right? So the North Pole is going to basically drop down the way the further I remove myself from it, right? Yeah. So that the angle that I'm measuring to the North Pole is 31.34 degrees. It's exactly the same as the angle that I'm measuring in their bullshit model, that I'm on the outside of the sphere, right? Yeah. I'm on the surface of the sphere. But in reality, I'm actually on a plane. And the latitude that we're talking about here is the distance is that blue circle, the distance from the center, right? Yeah. So, so, you this, would, yeah. so you would highlight where it's concentric circles, or even if people, to simplify it, you know, if, you're, if you stand on a football field and you're right directly under the goalposts, now if, uh, in the level of your, your head, as you walk backwards, as soon as that goalpost drops one degree in your visual field, draw a straight line across your feet, and that would be, you know, your first latitude line. And as you step back, you know, when you get to two degrees of drop, draw another line, and then you're starting to create latitude lines, but you're doing it on a, a, a plane. Hope that, hope that simplifies it. That makes sense there. Right, absolutely. Right. I mean, then that's the thing. We can see that and live life. You don't need to go to your back garden to be able to do that, right? If you just move away from something, you'll see it drop in your visual field, right? Now, that doesn't mean you're going down the side of a curve, right? No. It just means that the angle, right, you, because of the spherical vision that you have down here, right, yeah. it just means that the what you're seeing on your globe eye, right, yeah. is just dropping down the side of that surface. You're not on any physical surface, right? Yeah. It's just dropping down in your visual field because of, of your vision, right? Yeah. So both of these observations um, would, would satisfy the same um, um, criteria, right? Yeah. Whether I'm on a plane measuring things dropping their visible position 
or whether they tell us we're on the outside of a, of a, of a surface making a sighting to a faraway object, right, yeah. is, is, is exactly equivalent. Yeah. So I'm not saying, and you know, and I know you are too, Dale, that this is a proof that it's flat. What I'm pointing out is that what they're saying is not a proof of their claim, right? It's, yeah. you know, the, the, none of us can say that we have a proof of something. Yeah. All I'm pointing out is that there's an alternative explanation depending on whether you introduce the visible world, yeah. which they don't, right? The difference, the difference here, Gav, is, is that you are incorporating vision. Right, right. When they've got you on the surface of that, they'll know. Right, it's totally omitted. Maybe exactly. The geometry and how it, how it functions. No, exactly correct. And that's where you know it wouldn't work, right? If they if they said we were on a spherical ball and they they admitted to the fact that we have a spherical vision, if we will just call it that for the moment, or even any concepts of how the visible world works then none of their equations would work there. No. You know? No. So, so they have to uh, omit it, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why anybody who's, who's discussing visible phenomena, right, um, or, or trying to, to ignore it, let's say, or to, to, to reframe it in some other way, I think you need to be careful with these arguments because they have to admit to it. Yeah. They should be admitting to it, right? But they don't. No. Does that make sense? Of course. I hope it's not going over folks' heat all these diagrams, but yeah, you know, for me it's just important that you know you can. And again, I mean, the eye is measured. Um, what's the best way to describe this? We see the world as if things are in straight lines, right? Mm -hmm. But we, are, you know, sorry, let me rephrase that. Yeah. So the physical world, the Euclidean world, and the things we construct on plumb and level are straight lines. They are parallels and perpendiculars, right? Yeah. People will say, well, hold on a minute, if we've got spherical vision, how come we don't see curves all the time? Yeah. And that's not necessary because if we have to look at things directly, then you don't see the outward curve of your own eyes. So, so you don't see, you know, the, the eye doesn't distort what you're seeing, right? Because you're looking at it directly on. You see things then the straight lines, yeah. right? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So looking at the end of a the point of a pencil, it looks like a point, right? Yeah. Um, and, and 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 when if you turn it in this other angle, then you see that it's a straight line. Exactly. So so people who come and say, well, hold on a minute, spherical vision means it's everything looks spherical to the world, and that's not my experience. No, that doesn't happen because you look at things directly, right? But still, the geometry of what's seeing and how visible position plays a role in, in the objects that we see, that's what they like to admit, right? Yeah. What they would normally call, you know, the fact that things get smaller and, and, and the, the top of objects drops down, right? Yeah. So, yeah, they just, they just don't want to go to that place, right? No. They want to embroil us all in, 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 in meanings, right? Or words or... Um, and great circles, by the way, is also the way you would measure, you know, visible geometry. Because it's very cold, then you don't have straight lines, so you use great circles as the alternative for yeah. your measurement. Yeah. Right. So, so that's why in the visible world we're using the same thing. Yeah. And, and as, even, as, even even the, glo the globular Earth proponents will talk about that. You know, like you've got a, a circle around you. You know, the horizon is a three hundred and sixty degree circle around you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that brings the point home, right? You know, when, just because we see certain visible phenomena doesn't mean that you're backing down your back garden and falling down the side of a slope, do you know what I mean? No, it's just because, you know, you're removing yourself from the object and it drops in your visual position, which is a phenomenon of visible geometry, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, it's spot on. Yeah, so I'm just say they, they love to, to ignore it. We pointed out this many a time that you know that is one of the keys to seeing through the deceit. Yeah. Yeah. If you ask me, and through the rhetoric, yeah. Yeah. And and it's really important that, that this knowledge, I think, because it's not difficult really to understand, right? Yeah. I mean, I know these mathematical curves all you know blah blah blah, but it's not the, the actual concept's not difficult to understand, and it allows people then to stand fast in that knowledge and say, wait a minute, you know, no, right. you can't tell me this shit because exactly. you're ignoring this, you know. And, and, and yeah. as we've rightly stated, we're not claiming that it proves anything, you know. So these people should have the the honesty to say that it's not proving anything either, you know. That's right. Um, yep. 
I mean, we just point out the contradictions when they say that's the only reason it can be like that, right? You're saying, no, there's, there's not, because you're ignoring a whole aspect or there's a whole part of um, the science that you're obviously you're ignoring, right? Exactly. The, visible, the visible world. Exactly. So. Plus, I mean, they're based on so many assumptions as well. You know, what is Polaris? Where is it? What is its actual position? They have, they yeah. have to just make assumptions on these things. Again, formulating axioms from assumption and then working from there without ever proving the assumption in the first place. That's right. And we need to point out these contradictions. Yeah. And as I say, the good thing is that, you know, we have the substance on our side. Exactly. And keep, keep coming back to that, you know, I mean, we, we, you know, when we talk about how, how a sextant works, right? I mean, it relies on, in the old days, on liquid mercury to get a, 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 an image of the sun on it, right? Yeah. If you couldn't see, you know, the, the horizon properly because of fog, then you, you would use that. But, you know, so all these things rely on substances. Um, but as soon as you step into the world of mathematics, you, you throw that out the window. And that allows you then to, to, let's say, make up stuff, bend the rules, you know, call it what you want. Yeah. Um, and that's where where we need to pull them back and yeah. say, no, we can't all agree on that. That yeah. doesn't drive or live life. You know? and, and you can get conspiratorial or even just highlight the fact that, you know, mathematics has been elevated and the mainstream has been the, the, the main science, the, the trump of all. You know, and for me, that's deliberate. Um, I think so too, yeah. yeah. I think what used to be, you know, religious narratives, right, has been transferred over to, to science narratives and, and mathematics is used to, to turn it into a dogma, exactly. right, into a cult, yeah. right, at the end of the day, yeah. and get everybody believing in it. Yeah, so because it's just, a, it's just another form of language, like the words we're using and now we can use it to manipulate, tell lies, skew things, interpret things, you know, whatever way we want. And mathematics is no different. Absolutely no different. Yep. Yep. Spot on. Yep. So coming back to it again for me, you know, and yourself obviously it's a practicality. You know, I'll listen to your words, but it has to be backed by something demonstrable. I need a demonstration so that I can relate to it. You know, because I kind of relate to your words, especially when things have so many different definitions and meanings. You know, things can get lost in that translation. If you keep it simple, you know, make a statement, make a claim, I can hear your words, but it has to be supported by the practical, you know? And it, An absolute spot on. And if you're only interpreting things like visible phenomena, then you have to be ready to be questioned on that and account for every aspect of it. And if you can't, like when I ask, we ask continually, how are you accounting for the, the geometry of vision? You know, it's constantly being omitted and avoided, then... I can't, I can't engage with that. No, me neither. It's, it's, it's the first rule, isn't it? It's, it's coming to, to these first principles and agreeing on certain definitions and meanings before you kick off. Yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, it's just going to be going to round and rounds and circles. Yeah. 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 So, and again, you can see that as earlier as I was talking about, you know, what's the definition of level? Well, we'll get this definition and we'll get that definition, you know? Both, yeah. are, both are correct, only one has a real world practical application here. Yeah.